to be done. Just kidding, suck it! Just like Van Helsing I love writing songs And I really love to sing And I'm a cool guy Who does cool things I know it's complicated Bear with me I know it's complicated Bear with me I'm such a cool guy thinks that I'm cool, I think that that's alright She's a cool girl too, we ride into the night On my mystery motorcycle that I named James Jeffrey Clyde My wife's a cool girl too, we ride into the night I'm such a cool guy is me Do you get it, Mr. Guy? Do I need to say it another time? I'm such a cool guy I rock out every day I look in the mirror and say Hey, what a cool guy Cool. 
Hello! What's going on? Welcome to another exciting evening of Roarstream here on the beautifully digitalized and fantastically stylish Bort 3. We're here in the Kitty Theater. We're going to do some more power washing. You love some, excuse me, you love some coloring books and power washing streams. So cool. We should get some coloring books, Kitty. I'd like to do some adult coloring, as they call it. You know what they, you know, you know what they call it? Adult coloring? We should do that. That would be fun. Let's go upstairs. We, of course, cannot do our power washing stream before we get in to our, that's not the right, nope, there we go. Before we get in to our evening of Wordle, I don't even have power washing open right now. I am not on the ball today. All right, our first word is going to be ready because I am not. How are you gonna do me, ready? You gonna do me like that? Cool, how about stoop? I have a good feeling about stoop. 
dupe. Alright, well, that could have been worse. Okay, how about... Um, can I do olive? No, I can't. How about... I have to do something like... Bow... Fo... Fobil. Fiber? No. Fib... Fib... Libel? Can I do... No, I can't... Li lintel? I've got no idea what this word is. How about... Move. Moon... Money. Monic? Sonic? Ta no, can't do tonic. Honic? Iconic? How about icon? All these words suck. I, I've been, I have not been doing well with, uh, with old Wordle lately. How about... Nom... Nomen. Human? Alright, I might have to come back to this. Women. How are you, kitty? How was your, uh... How was your Monday? No, it's not Monday. How was your Tuesday? Was your Tuesday everything you hoped it would be? My Tuesday was spent walking around a lot. How many steps did I do today? I wonder. Uh, how about... Foo... Focus. Focal. Focal isn't a word. Alright, we'll have to come back to Wordle, because I can't focus right now. I'll, 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 I'll come back to that. Let's play... Some Power Wash. Let's do this, as they call it, this shit. You'd think I'd have the game actually up and running. I don't, because I'm stupid. Okay, I'm stupid. You want to take a, you want to take a look at my poof? Sometimes I just send this. <clears throat> hey, that, that's gotta go host the Oscars next week. All right, what do we want to do other than not show you the game? Let me fix that. Power washing sim. Ahoy. There you go. Hey, there we go. You had the nerve block and it went well. So so does it feel... No problems, kitty? You feeling okay? What do we want to do today? Do you want to clean the temple or the tree? I feel like the tree house is going to be a to-do. I feel like the treehouse is going to be a to-do. But, to-dos are part of the game. So, maybe we should do the to-do, as it were. It's up to you, Kitty. If you want to do the... Actually, no, it's not up to you. I don't want to put that onus on you. If you have a preference, I'll take it into account. But, I'm thinking we might want to do the treehouse. Just hammer that. Hammer this bad boy. I think, well, well, we'll take a look at the uh, introduction of the treehouse. You probably think I built this filthy treehouse deep in the forest because I've let myself go, but actually it's because I'm searching for the missing link. Problem is, whilst I'm out looking for them, and even sometimes in the dead of night, pranksters come all the way around here, hollering unearthly noises and chucking stinky mud around. A few times now... I've slid down the steps and clean off the edge. Of course, I've got the reflexes of a mongoose, so I always land on my feet and never break no bones. But it's probably time to get the place hosed down all the same. Thanks, Hunter. All right, Hunter. Let's take a look at your treehouse. Excellent. <laughs> you know me well. Bye. <laughs> see you in see you in thirty seconds, Kitty. 
Uh, enjoy the treehouse. Let's get going on this. Um, I figure... I don't know if this will be more or less hard than we expect, because now I have the ultimate of power washing equipment, and now I should be able to wash this bitch like there's no tomorrow. Uh, things like this, uh, things like this tire are more difficult than you'd think. I say difficult as if the tire is hard, but they're, they're more, there's more to this than you would imagine because there's stuff on the bottom. It's like three different dimensions that you have to worry about. You can't just do just the top. I've got the, um, God, this is outdated. I've got the old list of, uh, pleasant slash town music playing this evening. Um, I've got one, another file that I'm working on on my other computer that has a much more robust list of songs, but this one should do us just fine this evening. It's... It's very pleasant. You probably can't even hear it. It looks like it's real down low. I'm going to do a random sound effect. Okay. Well, what if I told you shut up? Yeah. Kind of changes things, doesn't it? <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> Sometimes I, I add so many sound alerts that I forget about some of the ones I add. Do I want to make any sort of semblance of a plan on this on this uh, treehouse? I'm thinking no. I'm probably just going to need to uh, get it bit by bit. Oh, I forgot to check if there's a achievement. Hold on. Uh, treehouse achievement power wash simulator. The Lantern Hunter. Complete all the lanterns first. Okay, well, we're not doing that right now. That's okay. Th these are my favorite kind of achievements because it's the very first thing you do in a level, so you can come back at any time and be like, only come back for the lanterns, which is what I'd have to do anyways. Like, if I actually wanted to get that achievement, I'd just have to start over for no reason. And I don't really feel like doing that. I'm gonna take a drink. One second. Kitty. I, you know what? It sounds good to Mr. Goodbar. What's in a Mr. Goodbar? Well, I feel like I've had Mr. Goodbar, obviously. I must have. But what, what what's in a Mr. Goodbar? What is it you like about it? The, the coconut? The chocolate? Yeah, all those things. My Joe Swanson sounds kind of like a uh, kind of like a mongrel dog sometimes. You want half a mounds bar? That's terrible. <laughs> oh, I really need to stop trying to do accents a second time because it's always awful. Peanuts and milk chocolate. Isn't Probably had them in the Hershey's minis. I feel like I've definitely had them as, uh, like the snack size, yeah. Like when you go trick or treating, or when your children go trick or treating and you pilfer all their candy, um, you get a lot of Mr. Good bars. I'm gonna be real, I don't think I've ever had a full size Mr. Good bar. Have you ever had a full size Mr. Good bar? I don't even think I've seen them ever sell one. They must have. Like, they pretty much only seem to come in the snack size, as far as I've seen, but hey, I haven't been looking for them, to be fair. So 
So if you could have any candy bar at this moment, right now, Kitty, that you, the candy bar of choice would be a Mr. Good bar? Hold on, I got an idea. Are you, you're, God, this isn't, we're gonna talk to the dumb AI tonight, aren't we? Oh, did I? Okay, we are actually talking to the good one. Hey, I want you to tell me all about a Mr. Good bar candy in intricate poetic detail v equals four all right i'll let that um i'll let that percolate for a moment i can tell it's talking on stupid mode because it's generating ah, real fast the mr good bar a bar of candy with the soul of a classic the kind of treat that invites nostalgia with every bite let me tell you its story intricate and poetic woven in layers of sweetness, saltiness, and texture that come together like a grand symphony of indulgence. At first glance, the Mr. Good Bar may seem unassuming, a simple gold foil wrapped rectangle with a name that is just a little bit cheeky, yet undeniably familiar. Cheeky? Its golden cloak gleams in the light, tempting you to discover what lies beneath. What makes it cheeky? When the foil is peeled back, it reveals the candy's true heart, a mix of milk chocolate, smooth and creamy, Hugging crunchy roasted peanuts, nestled like treasures within the silky chocolate. Bite into it and immediately the crunch of peanuts bursts forth, a welcome contrast to the smoothness of the milk chocolate that envelops them. The chocolate itself is velvety, melting slowly on your tongue, but not too fast. Is this kink content? There's no content? rush when savoring such a Is this treat. a kink thing? Each bite is like a quiet celebration, as the sweet milkiness balances perfectly with the saltiness of the peanuts, creating a harmony Ooh, of flavors. Oh, I sure hope he said peanut. The peanuts, those humble, earthy little orbs, add a hearty texture that grounds the candy, keeping it from being too sweet or too rich. Together, they dance across your taste buds, playing off each other's strengths. The magic of the Mr. Good Bar is in its simplicity, its ability to balance the fine line between decadence and restraint. It is not overly indulgent, but neither does it lack depth or satisfaction. It is a candy bar that brings a comforting familiarity, a sense of warmth and satisfaction, like coming home to a hug from an old friend. Each square is a perfect bite-sized moment, offering a fleeting but pure joy. As you finish the last bite, there is a lingering sweetness, but also an echo of the saltiness from the peanuts, a subtle aftertaste that invites you to reach for just one more square, like a delicate whisper to your senses. Mr. Good Bar is not just a candy bar, it is an experience, a moment of contentment wrapped in gold, a story told with chocolate and peanuts. It is the perfect balance, as simple as it is complex, a reminder that sometimes the best things come in humble packages. It had me, I, I was okay with it until like a hug from an old friend. Get out of here, devil bot, come on, come on. You were, you were right on the money, you know, I was on board. Until, like, a hug from an old friend. Come on. <laughs> Mr. Good Bar is, is a delicious candy bar. But that's a little much. That's a little much, isn't it? It's a little strong. <laughs> also, I love the, uh, I, I love the, uh, corporate retreats. Uh, trust building exercise area down here. It's like, okay, now everybody needs to stand on the balance beams and not fall off for a full 60 seconds and we win a corporate dollar. We, 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 we get to win a, uh, we, we get to win a, a free corporate dollar that we can use in the company's store. Also, all these stupid signs have done you no good. There's gunk all over your damn house. Maybe if you'd be more welcoming, people wouldn't gunk your house. But, hey, I'm just here to power wash, mate. I mean, I'd take Godiva over it. I mean, yeah. I, I, would, I would say that, uh, that Godiva should trump pretty much all other forms of chocolate. Um, outside of like private, um, outside of private chocolatiers. I just had a horrible thought. <sighs> you know how we've thought of all of these really fancy ass, 
um, area, you know, these fancy ass places as being above and beyond when it comes to food. What if Godiva has a really gross Listeria factory too, and we just don't know it yet? How how many levels shaded of screwed would that be? It's like how could you trust anything if you couldn't trust Godiva? And I don't know anything. Maybe they maybe they have a world design class of cleanliness at Godiva Chocolatiers, but I trusted Boar's Head. That would that one's gonna haunt me, haunt. It's gonna haunt me for a long ass time. I feel like every time I put, why do you have to steal my joy? I'm not trying to steal your joy. I'm just saying we need to come. I'm not saying that to steal your joy. I'm saying that to say maybe instead of taking companies and putting them on a pedestal, maybe places like, I don't know, uh, uh, G Gutentolf's Chocolatier, may maybe just because they don't have a big name, maybe they are doing really good, and the places that we have known and loved that maybe aren't doing so hot in the old cleanliness department. I don't know anything. Like I said, Godiva might be like the Victorian Alberts of, uh, of chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like that last time was a total fluke. She had no effect on me at all. <laughs> also, I'm going to assume with absolutely no evidence whatsoever that it's harder for chocolate to get listeria than, um than cheese and and uh, pork. Although, in the interest of fairness, the uh, the the cheese never did get the um, wisteria that we know of. Hey, you still go to chocolate shops when we go on vacations? Well, we wouldn't. Yeah, when we vaccinated, it was it was a lot of fun when we used to be able to do that. This song is from Chrono Trigger. What do you want to... We, we're going on a vacation soon, Kitty. We got that going for us. We're going on a cruise soon. I should devote a night to uh, doing like a walkthrough of the cruise. Because I'm not going... Even if we watched it right now, I'm not going to remember a walkthrough of the cruise if we do it like weeks beforehand. But if we do it like the week before, maybe like the Sunday before the cruise, Right? Maybe that would be something fun to do, like, like a around the cruise time. Specchio is a little loud. I'm gonna do a random sound effect. Watch yours. Beavis, if you say more needles, I'm gonna beat the living crap out of you. I think that's about the volume I want. Let me know if uh, anything's bad for you, but uh, that seems about the volume mix I'm looking for. It's a great idea. Maybe I'll fix that right now. Hold on. Let me take a look. Where's Discord? There it is. Let me take a look at the old stream schedule for December. Do we leave on uh, Monday, Kitty? That's perfect. I've got a I've got a spare day in December. I mean, I could just do a stream on you know off off kilter days but i'd like to keep my schedule close to what it is um cruise tour video there we go it is updated for december like the sunday before the cruise we'll watch a uh cruise tour of the utopia of the uh, of the uh of the ship that we're gonna go on what the hell am I talking about? We're going on the utopia of the seas. Am I stupid? <laughs> it's like, how am I going to hide that if we're going to watch a YouTube video of it? 
Monday the 9th, and we are having dinner with your family Sunday the 8th. All right. <sighs> Looks like we're doing the cruise tour video. Okay, you, you stop. Looks like we're doing the cruise tour video on a Saturday then. And... Man, we can't do a stream then either. All right, that's fine. So that's like the whole week there is off. So no stream. No stream Sunday, Tuesday, or Thursday. We could stream on Friday. I'll, be, I'll have a Friday stream that week. T B B. I know you can't see anything. Sorry. Very intense scheduling going on in the background. I've I've enjoyed streaming much more ever since I've rigorously and autistically started scheduling things in my Discord. It's like you know what? If I just do this half-assed, hey, I need to go do a, run a stream right now and I don't know what I'm going to play, I'm going to hate the results because I haven't put any thought into it. If I schedule things four months out, like a weird person would, it just works really well for me, which says a lot about me. Um, I, I guess it says that I like structure and discipline, just like the dad from American Beauty. Don't give up on me, dad. Right before stream, like the entire time after after uh, we started watching videos and after we after dinner, when I came in here, I was working on something that would uh, update. I think I told you about it last night, but it would update the schedule, and I think I finally got it fixed. So I'm looking forward to tonight for me to put in the stream vod link, and it's going to update the entire schedule, including when the all sorts of stuff. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. You're going to be like, and then you're going to be like, and then you're going to be like, and then you're going to be like, those are all the things you're going to be like. I keep telling you, Kitty, we need to set you up with a, uh, with a stream night, like Wednesdays with Kitty. You can do so. You can do some crochet. There's a lot of uh, there, there's there's a lot of makers and crafting streamers on Twitch. I could set you up with all of it. I don't know. No pressure, obviously. But if you, but I think, heck, I'd watch you, baby. You'd be awesome. Kitty, did you notice that when you do a slot machine, your little guy down there does a slot machine too? And they also got the uh, got the jackpot down there. There actually is a currency system in stream avatars, and I don't really know what to do with it. There's like a whole currency system where you can buy different avatars and and dress them up, and you can have certain gear that only unlocks if you use the stupid in- not stupid, but the, like, in-depth, in-app currency, and it's a, a little much for me. It's- it, it's a little too much. I like having it be like, oh, I don't like what you all are. Uh, you're gonna be something different now. One of you is an apple. <laughs> okay. I- I- the random is a little- Suspect. A couple of you got the the stream fruits uh, category. There's like a whole currency system where you can um, spend money to use the slot machine. And it's like, good lord, no! Make them use channel points, like 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 God intended. 
This song, by the way, is from uh, Mario RPG. It is uh, the Monstro Town theme. I would turn on the... Um, hold on, I have a button for that. I would turn on the now playing but, uh, option, but uh, yeah, when I did my old radio, I turned all of the songs uh, titles into numbers. Uh, for reasons that are too stupid to go into now. But, uh, yeah, the new updated radio will have actual title track names. Until then, though, this is Monstro Town from the Super Mario RPG soundtrack. Only on Roarstream Radio. And probably a shit ton of other places. I was talking to who was I talking to today? Oh, I was uh, um, today. Someone was looking at my perlers at work, and uh, they they every now and then, probably maybe once every two months, maybe someone will ask about the perlers, and I'll be like, "Do you make these yourself? You make these yourself?" And I'll be like, "Yeah," and that's awesome. Can get too organized. Agreed. That's that you, you can get to a form of organized where you're like Eulalia. Eulalia. And uh that that becomes too much. It's like God bless him. He is a he is a gentleman and a scholar, I guess. I don't know. I don't know if he's been cancelled. But I I, mm, I I don't necessarily want to be Eulalia. Eulalia is his own man. He was set up to Congress. This uh, is from Chrono Trigger. This is the end of time theme. Hey, welcome to New Vegas. Tomorrow, um... DD Mega Doodoo. <laughs> Tomorrow, DD Mega Doodoo. Actually, not tomorrow. The next stream, we are going to go back to, um, Doki, not Doki Doki. We love Katamari. Probably finish it up. And we're going to do the Q GeoGuessr game. Um, there is one more GeoGuessr on YouTube. <laughs> DD Mega, Mega Doo Doo. It's like, you weren't even close. It's like... Your whole job is reading a teleprompter. You gotta, you gotta t take a little more effort into it. Like the name wasn't super easy. That's why you like practice it on the break if you get the ability, or maybe just don't say doo doo on when the camera is on. I don't know. I can say doo doo. I'm not the news. <laughs> hey, Mr. Prime Minister! Andy! <laughs> I feel annoyed. What's going on? I still need to do Wordle. I'll take a look at Wordle uh, after break. I'll come back to Wordle. Because I didn't see shit in today's Wordle. It was, uh, it was not a good... It's not, it's not looking good for old Homestar Runner over here in the Wordle category. We are working on a treehouse, and it's looking real good. It's looking real good, Carl, from down here. I don't know whose camera this is. Whoever's it is, I hope they know that when I go on break, uh, I'm going to be spinning it the entire time. You got it in three? I could get it in three. <laughs> I have to like, no pressure or anything. Have I gotten everything I can from down here? This is the uh, Mushroom Kingdom theme. Uh, Welcome to Mushroom Kingdom from Super Mario RPG. I, sh I should just take off the now playing uh, stupid number name. Get out of here. Good job getting it in three, kitty. I 
I'm gonna end up getting like not getting the stupid Wordle, and I'm gonna end up getting really pissy about it and going back to Swerdle. I'm gonna have to go back to Swerdle. I'm gonna have to put in I'm gonna have to put in cock and dick and spunk. But spunk won't work because that's five letters. Yeah, the, uh, the one I'm working on on my other laptop will have the actual track names, but that is on a laptop that's not even in my house, so I will have to work on that later. I was going to work on that today, but uh, I didn't, and I just realized I, it would be stupid to go into why. <laughs> I'm not stupid, so I won't. <laughs> <laughs> how was your um how was your Tuesday feeling? Was it everything you hoped it would be? Did it light the did it, did it light a spark of joy in your life that uh, that only only the rush of time and heartache will put out? I'm thirsty. I need to find a better version of the Mario uh, Kingdom song because this one is a little glitchy. I don't know if you hear the little doing a little bit of a, a little bit of glitchiness going on in the background. I don't know if that's intentional. I don't think it is. I'm not gonna lie. A whole bunch of little detritus. Like there we go. A lot of this will just be cleaning up the edges. Yeah, there we go. This is also from Super Mario RPG. It is from Moleville. That would be fun. Uh, I couldn't really put it together, though, could I? If I put together a song soundtrack, I couldn't do it. Because that would be... Because then I would know. Like, if I put together, like, a soundtrack, do a barrel roll, I, uh, I, I haven't put that together yet. Let me put that in the scribble pad. I think I did look into it. There is... Oh, God. Hold on, 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 hold on. Do a barrel roll! Oh, that's really bad. <laughs> um, that, that, that's, that's, that's pretty close, isn't it? The Eiffel Tower was the tallest structure in the world before the construction of the Empire State Building in 1930. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I'm asking the devil. I don't believe that for a second. Hey, fact check this, please. V equals three. I could yes, that's correct. The Eiffel Tower held the title of the tallest structure in the world from its completion in 1889 until the Empire State Building was finished in 1931. The Eiffel Tower stands at 324 meters, 1,063 feet tall, while the Empire State Building reached a height that of 433 meters, 1,454 feet to the top of its antenna surpassing the Eiffel Tower and taking over the title of the tallest man-made structure in the world at the time. That can't be true. That can't be true. What about all like the uh, the, 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 the temples built out of, uh, you know, out of sandstone and marble and stuff? What about, what about the pyramids? There's no way the Eiffel Tower is taller than the pyramids, right? Hold on. There's no way the Eiffel tower is t taller than the pyramids exclamation marks Ooh. you're right to feel a bit thrown off <laughs> while the eiffel tower is an impressive structure <laughs> it is not taller than the great pyramids of giza in fact the great pyramid also known as the pyramid of khufu originally stood at about 146.6 meters 481 feet tall when it was completed around 2560 BC, though it's slightly shorter today due to the loss of the outer casing stones. 
So, even though the Eiffel Tower is 324 meters, 1,063 feet tall, it does not surpass the Great Pyramid in height. The pyramids have stood as some of the tallest human-made structures for millennia, long before the Eiffel Tower was ever conceived. Am I stupid? Like, am I am I wrong here? I, I know I'm not trusting the GPT, obviously, but it sounds like it just confirmed what I said. Like, I, there's the pyramids are taller than the Empire, or, um, not, than the Eiffel Tower, right? Tallest structure in the world before the construction of the Empire State Building. What does that entail, I wonder? It said you were right after showing you were very wrong. Hold on, let me read what it said. The Great Pyramid of, of Giza was a... I'm just going to go back to power washing. It's looking real good. That can't be right. That can't be right. I mean, there's no way. I mean, one of them came from a, you know, well, you know, did you know facts website from 1999 and one of them came from the devil bot that can't be trusted. That's two sources. It has to be trusted. Look up the heights of each. Is there like a website that uh, height compares? Compare height pyramid of Giza. This is uh, the secret of mana flammy theme. Uh, Pyramid of Giza, Eiffel Tower. Suck you. Suck my ass. What? Where's the picture? Where'd it go? Really? <sighs> okay. I stand corrected. That's wild to me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I never thought that it was... Not, none of them are the tallest now, except for that one, the uh, Burj Khalifa. I've probably not pronounced right, but whatever. I'm still in I'm still in shock. I'm in shock that the Eiffel Tower is taller than the uh than, than the Pyramid of Giza. I'm 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 hoodwinked. I'm flabbergasted. I'm bag I'm 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 mind boggled. Pyramids claim to fame is they're that big long ago and the fact that they're nearly solid. But they're... <sighs> the Eiffel Tower is really that much taller than the pyramids. A lot of empty space in there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying the Eiffel Tower... <sighs> it, 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 the Eiffel Tower is really cool. I'm not trying to dog on the Eiffel Tower. Think about it. You as a little boy climbed the pyramids in Chichen Itza. Okay, well, Kitty, I don't think the... I, I think the Pyramid of Chichen Itza is way shorter, but I could be wrong. Let's ask, uh, let's ask GPT. Hey, when I was a kid, just a wee lad, I climbed the Chichen Itza Pyramid in Mexico. How tall... Was that? I bet you, if I had to guess, that pyramid, that the the uh, the height of those stairs was probably like 150 feet. Chichen Itza. I should find the pictures of Chichen Itza. 
chicken either. Oh, I'm gonna turn you down real fast. You're right to feel a bit thrown off. Shut up. While the Eiffel Tower is an impressive str the Pyramid of Kukulchan at Chichen Itza stands at about Chichen 24 Itza. meters, Chicken 79 pizza. feet tall. It's also known <laughs> Chicken Pizza. The Pyramid of Kukulchan at Chichen Itza stands at about 24 meters, 79 feet tall. Okay. <laughs> it's also known for its grand staircase with 91 steps on each of its four sides, which when combined total 365 steps, the number of days in a year. What an incredible experience to climb such a historic monument as a kid. <laughs> As a kid. Okay, yeah, this one's apparently 24 meters tall, which is, uh... Originally stood... Yeah, it's, uh, it's considerably shorter. Chichen Itza was amazing. Remember when we watched the Chichen Itza light show? Ch Chichen Itza. Chichen Itza. Remember when we watched the light show? That was nice. The people of Chichen Itza. I don't... I don't know what the people of Chichen Itza prefer to be called. I don't know. How did I get in here? How did I get up here? Hello? How did I get up here? How did I get up here? Did I climb up the stairs? I don't remember doing that. Was I so wrapped up in Chichen Itza that I didn't notice uh, climbing the stairs? Could be wrong. I could have sworn I was on the ground level and I was looking up. When was the last time we were in a good tree house? The last time I remember that like we were in like a building in the trees was when we were doing that uh, that zipline course with all the uh, with all the wasps. What are you saying there, Hunter Load? They're sometimes called Bigfoot because they're one big foot, kind of like a bear's. Burr. The other one's small. What did you, what were you saying there? Like a cat's. I've found evidence of this myself. Okay, this is gonna be a joke, isn't it? This is, this is aiming towards oh, a joke. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. That one's really quiet. Let's do a different one. Uh, call me back if you get a free moment. I just uh, wanted to, uh, to lord over you for a little bit longer. To a little bit longer. A hand job ain't enough. You have to let him bang ya. Why was I calling? To do this? Yeah, I know I ain't called you in two years. But if I want to call you in... I don't, I don't remember the rest of the quote. Because we are family, and I have that right. Didn't we just hear this? Where's the log? Oh, it reset the cycle. Got it. Your mom has rented some uh, cute treehouse places. Did we stay in them? We stayed in places that have been like... In the woods, not necessarily in tree houses. You did a lot of fishing in Sea of Stars today. Tell me more, Fionoid. What kind of fishing? Like... What, what is the... F okay, calm down. What is the fishing similar to? Is it similar to, like, a Stardew Valley kind of fishing? Is it similar to a Super Mario... Or not... Uh, Harvest Moon Super, Super Nintendo kind of fishing? Someday soon, I'm going to get back to working on my... Uh, on my Fisher... Uh, Python script. There was this really expensive accessory you wanted immediately, and fish is the most reliable way to make money. Oh, I need to play that game, don't I? Well, that depends. Like, how shit is the fishing? Not all fishing games are good. Since many enemies don't even f drop gold.
Fishing is good. Okay. That. Oh. Um. It doesn't really give me a. <laughs> doesn't really give me a metric to work from, but I can I can roll with that. Do you have like um? I'm trying to think of other forms of fishing in video games. Uh, the, the, uh, a short hike. A short hike. Do a little on Discord streaming after your stream. Realistically, I will probably be exhausted by 10 o'clock, knowing my uh, knowing my luck with um, with, uh, with 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 uh, these kind of streams. Also, I had to do a tour today. <laughs> I am so tired, but I am I am interested in seeing it and seeing uh, what kind of fishing style it is. Is it? I'm trying to think of just the most obscure style of fishing. Is it like Ocarina of Time fishing, where Link has to go ha, ha, and then the fish just pops into his hands, and you get a piece of heart if you catch a really fat one. This song is from Chrono Trigger. I think it's called Secret of the Forest, if I'm not mistaken. You don't know many fishing games? That's fair. Fishing is... I, I, part of me wants to say it's important in a video game, but I've played far too many video games where the fishing mechanic has been completely arbitrary and stupid and pointless and it's obvious they spent either way too much time on it for for it to be as bad as it is or way too little time for them to have bothered putting it into the game and I'm like God, come on and say it's good for fun for you anyways I mean if it's fun that's the important thing that's really all there is to it I'm gonna be real I don't think Stardew Fishing Mini... Uh, I don't think Stardew Valley Fishing is all that fun. I mean, I don't mean to... drop any hyper-truth bombs over here. But I think that Stardew Fishing is... And, and that's entirely a uh, matter of perception. Some people love it, and that's, you know, to each their own. I don't. It's not. It's. I, I don't. I don't think there's much fun about it. I think. I think the keeping it inside of the two little, the two little notches, and making sure your fish, d you know, stays within those two little notches for long enough, and then the other bar goes up, and it's just a balancing game. I don't like it. I don't like it. Bad. It's a bad way of fishing. I don't know. I think it should either be super detailed, like one, like a, like a Sega fishing, or um, it should be real easy, like you push a button and fish shows up in your inventory. Like back in the demo, fishing was the only way to grind money, uh, bitch. You had and you had and you there to a degree that it hurt your hands to get the same accessory. Is there a um, is there a Sea of Stars demo? There used to be. of thieves that's not it fresh women that's not it either there's not probably should have grabbed it while it was there I think I I think I was going to and then I didn't because I'm stupid although you know I bet you I bet you it's probably online somewhere I don't know. Maybe I, I bet you like the last version of the demo has to be online somewhere. Considering I just want to play the damn demo and, you know, I don't publicly condone piracy, but maybe have the demo available so people can play your goddamn game. I don't know. Feels weird, man. I, 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 
in an age where you can... There was only ever the one version that was a Steam demo, so it'd have to be cracked. Well, I would assume that'd take like four minutes for anybody who actually wanted to, but I don't want to go down the piracy route. I don't want to pirate the game. I definitely don't want to pirate the game because I want to give people money when it's due. I just want to play the demo. Although I guess I could just, you know, watch you or a stream or something. I'm just more interested in the fishing at the moment. Cracking Steam IPI is uh, apparently shockingly easy. I don't want to do that. I've got thousands of video games. I will never, if I devote the rest, this is Moleville again. If I devote the rest of my life to playing video games, I will never come close to cracking my list. The point I'm trying to get to is, why bother pirating anything? It's not really a moral thing for me, it's just, why bother? I have so many damn games. Part of me says capitalism is bad, take everything that isn't nailed down. But the other part of me says that's illegal and I would never say anything like that. And that's the side that wins out. There's an even smaller third side of me that says don't screw over the little guys. And from what I understand, Sea of Stars, you know, already has a relatively cheap game and I don't want to do that anyways. I just want to play the demo. Why would you have a demo and then get rid of the demo? I don't know. Seems dumb. And considering it was free to begin with, it's really heavy on the Mario RPG tonight. That said, what I really don't want to do is wake up one day to a, like, blocked Steam library. Remember how I said I had, like, thousands of games? I don't want all of those terrible Humble Bundle games to all be deleted, along with some of the ones I spent real actual money on, like Hades 2 and Slay the Princess. I mean, to, for clarification, all of my Steam library games are 100% legal and paid for. <laughs> They're bought and paid for! To be fair, there's legit reasons to axe a demo, like if it supplants the full game for some people. I mean... I played... Um, both me and my brother played that. You remember Yoda Stories? You remember Yoda Stories, the terrible game? Um, the... the the, the terrible little thing. We played that demo for a dog's age. It was ridiculous how much we played that demo. To be fair, we would have happily played the full game, considering it was more or less like one of the first roguelikes we ever played. It was a different game every time. Of course I'd want to play that. But no, because apparently we might not have ever asked but I think the answer would have been a resounding no. Uh, we never got the uh, uh, Jedi Stories full download. Lord of the Realms Demo 2, you played for years and years, and that was the only two games you ever pirated when the demo was gone because you ain't paying for it, but then you got Steam and ended up buying the game for 25 cents. What kind of game is Lords of the Realm 2? I could ask you, but let's see what the devil has to say about it. Cool. Hey, quick topic change how what kind of game is lords of the realm 2 how close is it to chrono trigger i spelled that so wrong glad you couldn't see any of that Lords of the Realm 2 is a real-time strategy RTS game that focuses on medieval warfare, resource management, and kingdom building. Released in 1996, the game combines real-time tactical combat with turn-based strategic planning. You manage a kingdom, oversee its economy, and command armies to expand your influence and conquer other territories. 
It's known for its resource management, like collecting food, gold, and wood, and battles that unfold on a tactical map. Is it like map StarCraft? Units in real time. On the other hand, Chrono Trigger is a classic role-playing game <laughs> RPG, first released in 1995, with a deep narrative. I have a feeling it's not similar. Mechanics. The focus is on exploration, character development, and story progression, rather than on kingdom management. What? While both games are from the same era and feature strategic elements, they are quite different in terms of gameplay and genre. Lords of the Realm 2 is more about managing kingdoms and armies, while Chrono Trigger is a deeply narrative-driven RPG with turn-based battles. Trigger. So in short, they share some strategic elements, but are very distinct in terms of style, gameplay, and purpose. Lords of the Realm 2 doesn't resemble Chrono Trigger closely, but both games offer engaging experiences in their own right. It's trying so hard to be nice. It's trying so hard to be nice. It's like, it's not really like Chrono Trigger, but if you squint, I can sort of see where you'd think that was cool. Ha ha ha. It's nothing like StarCraft. It's like a really slimmed down Crusader Kingdoms. And it, that mean it's not like Age of Empire 2. Because that, that game I know. Okay. I'd have to see it. We're almost at break time, but uh, I want to get to 50%. Just for my own neuroticness. Also, again, super heavy on the Mario RPG this evening. I'm looking forward to having a more balanced list next time I have the radio on. I heard a random stream, not a random streamer, I heard the streamer, uh, one of the ones I was listening to was talking about bug snacks the other day, and it's like, is the Matrix just bored? It's like, can it leave me alone? Like, it keeps collapsing upon itself. Like, hey, remember that game you spent a lot of time on? Now you do. You can play a smidge of LOTR same time as... SOS. That's the ABBA song? Sending out an SOS. Sea of Stars. Oh, Sea of Stars. That makes sense. It's the end of the world, in your opinion? Eh. Listen. I'm just here to play video games and have a good time with my favorite people. And I'm at 50%, so it's time to take a break. Let me get up here. Also, I'm going to switch the radio over. We haven't had any Mr. New Vegas because I haven't been on the Vegas radio because I'm stupid. Let's switch over to the uh, Mr. Vegas radio. You know, I uh, tried to measure my charisma. I'm going to take a quick break. Uh, I'll be back in three minutes. The machine burst into flames. We've got some news for you coming right up. Rumors continue to swell that Mr. House, the father of New Vegas, has passed away. Who will fill the power vacuum on the strip? remains uncertain. Moving on. We'll have more news for you at the top of the hour. Got a song for you now. It's about a guy who's cold on the exterior, but deep down, you know, he's a good man. And his name is Johnny Guitar.
I'm eating a pop tart. One minute. That was delicious. All right. Anyways. How you guys doing? Honestly, and 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 I really like I said, I don't want to ever ever <laughs> broach politics in this damn stream ever again. I am retired as fuck. I am letting the world goddamn burn. Um, but just to put an edge on it, just to put a point on it, it's like, you know what? I'm just going to power wash, man. I'm going to put my head down and power wash, vote when I need to. And, you know, just throw up some middle fingers. Not give up necessarily, but just throw up some middle fingers. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Let's talk about this cat. Let's talk about this cat. I think we need to talk about this fucking cat right here. I'm going to call him Chandlo. Chandlo the cat. It's an adorable cat. This song is from uh, Final Fantasy Mystic Quest. I know, Katie. I know. That was my bad, I, I assumed. Chandler was the bro from Bug Snacks. As I said it, I'm like, this name sounds really familiar. <laughs> so my, I, I needed a name that sounded like cat-like, and I'm like... I guess I got bug snacks on the brain, which is, I'm definitely not due for a replay. I would rather speak as Chad doesn't have inflection. No, kitty, it's fine. It's okay. I, I, I miss it. It's my own misinterpretation. Just call it an actual food. Gordita. This cat's name is Gordita. Do you like Gordita the cat? <laughs> Where did you find Gordita? I feel annoyed. Was he just rando cat from the internet? Something about orange cats, man. I love me some uh, a black cat, but there's something about orange cats that are just adorable little sweethearts. I've been getting a lot of. Uh, I, I was. I don't think I told you this, Kitty, but um, the other day. When I was looking at um, notifications, it's a meme cat. Fair enough. Thank you. I was looking at uh, notifications from a phone that I look at sometimes. It was a work phone. Fuck it. <laughs> and uh, somebody, uh, somebody's morning message said, um, was talking about Life Day, which was wild to me because apparently people think that Life Day is supposed to be celebrated in November. Which maybe it is, I don't know, maybe that's the official thing, but I always thought, since it's the Star Wars Christmas special, it should be celebrated on sp on Christmas. For the disgusted look on his face? He doesn't look disgusted, he looks adorable. He looks like, happy! He looks like, uh, like an adorable little kitty. Gordita the adorable kitty. 
Also, uh, my grandmother uh, used to have a cat named Pumpkin, and uh, now my grandmother is dead. So uh, I don't You're think I. You're listening to Raw Stream Radio. All the best hits for the most precious of diamonds. So I don't know if I can come around to uh, naming this <laughs> weird track to come in from that. <laughs> He looks like he's smiling. He looks like a smiley kitty. This song is also from Super Mario RPG. Uh, do I have any songs that aren't from Super Mario RPG? I thought I had like a whole litany of Final Fantasy VI songs, but apparently Willow doesn't want to play those tonight. I used to have a whole scene set up where it would like shift everything over to the left a little bit, and Dagoth Ur would be over there playing at the D like playing at a DJ table, but that was on my old computer, and it was resource heavy, and I never used the gag, so I just deleted it. Also, that is a green Mega Man down there at the bottom. What power is that Mega Man using? Biscuits is a good name for a cat. Wikipedia says Life Day is after autumn. So, okay. I mean, when you start getting into st when you start getting into sci-fi, like proper time like, keeping track of time it seems a little weird because, you know, not all planets work in the same time system, but I guess you can just it's not like milliseconds are different on a different planet. Milliseconds to hours. You can do time conversions. But the point I'm trying to get to is in theory, X amount of days, 365, I guess? That's what I'm trying to say, Coyote. Also, hi, Coyote. I don't... I... Maybe I'm stupid. By a strict de definition sense, autumn ends on December 20th. Oh. So technically, it could be in a sort of, you know, holiday-ish season. The whole concept seems a little half-baked, to be honest. Especially since, you know, Life Day is a half-baked holiday where people come together, put on red robes and walk into an and walk into a star. One hundred percent excuse for a Christmas special, but it sucked. Nobody liked it. Nobody wanted it. Who wanted it? The executives wanted it. George Lucas didn't want it, and the rest of the cast was on cocaine. They just had it in their contract that they had to do it. The Emperor just a dick and tells everyone whatever time it is on Coruscant, like Greenwich time. You know, I don't think the Wookiees would, uh, would agree to that, but honestly, that's probably would be the Emperor's response of... How do we celebrate galactic holidays? Um, yeah, they would just use Coruscant time. I would, I would have to imagine. It's a very peaceful treehouse. I got an idea. Let's ask the devil. I'm going to open up a new chat. Let's see how well he works with uh, with voice chat. Hey, listen, I have a question. 
Um, on a galactic scale, when it comes to Star Wars, how do they celebrate holidays? I'm thinking specifically for Life Day when it comes to the Wookiees on Kashyyyk. How do they celebrate that? You didn't even get close to the right word there. Uh, how do they celebrate that across the uh, across the galaxy? Like, if it's autumn, isn't isn't uh, it supposed to be a Christmas special? Isn't it supposed to be an analog to Christmas? Question mark. <laughs> it's like, sir. Yes. Life Day in Star Wars is indeed an analogue to Christmas, particularly in the context of the Star Wars Holiday Special that aired in 1978. Life Day is a Wookiee holiday celebrated on Kashyyyk. I know what Wookiees. Life Day it's a time is! Of family, reflection and honouring life and the bond between all living things. The special itself focused on the Wookiee family of Itchy, Lumpy and Mala as they prepared for Life Day. Jesus Christ. And it introduced the idea that Wookiees would gather together share meals and engage in rituals that involve celebrating life <laughs> sexual tension and the importance of the family unit they were shown decorating their homes with life day symbols which included are you kidding me right now stars or celestial objects and there was an emphasis on the spiritual nature of the holiday as for how life day is celebrated across the galaxy it is not explicitly detailed in canon but it is assumed that different species and planets would observe it in various ways, much like Christmas traditions vary across cultures. In Star Wars canon, Life Day is more of a Wookiee-specific holiday, but it could be celebrated across the galaxy in a more universal way, bringing people together and promoting peace and harmony. The Star Wars holiday special itself is a bit of a cult classic, and while the specifics of Life Day celebrations are vague, it's often used to emphasize themes of togetherness, joy, and unity in the Star Wars universe. Values that echo the spirit of many real-world holidays, including Christmas. Well, it has to scrape its information from somewhere, so in theory, maybe it got a Wikipedia article or something that explained, you know, Life Day. I could Google it, but... I'm going to be real. I don't think Google knows either. I don't think anyone does because Life Day is ridiculous and stupid. Google your balls. Your balls. It seems like you're, like you're having a bit of fun. <laughs> if you have any other questions, whether they're about Star Wars or anything else, feel free to ask. It sounds like you're having a giggle, mate. <laughs> it sounds like you're having a bit of a, a bit of a, a bit of a nosh. Hi, Mr. New Vegas. There ain't, there's not a Lego Star Wars holiday game. I know there's a Lego Star Wars holiday movie. I just typed in Lego Star Wars. There is? Wait. A Star Wars story Christmas pack. Lego Star Wars... There's a DLC. There's a movie, I know that much. Man, it, if there was a Lego Star Wars Christmas special, you bet your bottom dollar we'd be playing that. That'd be that would have been on the schedule months ago. That sounds like a good modding project. Didn't they change the whole plot of the Star Wars Christmas special? In fact, didn't they just make 
a Lego Star Wars Christmas special that had nothing to do with the original. Am I wrong on that? I don't know much about the Lego Star Wars Christmas special other than that it exists. Part of me is kind of itching for ways to think of playing more Lego games. Thought your bus your schedule was bursting at the seams. It is. <laughs> but I still I still want to play Lego games. It was with the sequel characters time traveling to the original trilogy and the whole thing was silly as Life Day deserves. My schedule is jam-packed, although a lot of December is... I, I, I need to refine a lot of the December schedule because a lot of it just says Christmas potpourri. Which is basically a way of saying Christmas special night. And I'm like, I need to be a little more organized than that. I want Christmas to be a Christmas-themed month. Okay, calm down. I've got a few specific things I'd like to watch. And at the beginning of the month, or at the beginning of Christmas season, we'll be playing this game. Um, we'll be doing the Santa DLC, the uh, Santa Sled DLC. The stream after that will be the um, the classics that we watch every year. December has been renamed Christmas. Did I say Christmas? Christmas should I, I? I thought about it as I was saying it. I'm like, did I say December or Christmas? I'm like, ah, screw it. <laughs> You love Kevin? I'm looking forward to watching some um, Home Alone. Home Alone 2 as well. I found a mother load of Christmas special ideas and a lot of them I hate to say it are on YouTube I'm also um, very early blue sky working on that's not the right term very early prototype working on a new way for the YouTube randomizer to work so right now I've been having it run through uh, the normal way I've been coding for the last eight years which is half-assed and jerry-rigged. I'm actually trying to uh, uh, poop out a Python script that will do it properly. And part of me is wondering, I've got all these new Python scripts. Do I need to learn another script to do some of this stuff? Or is Python really the best way? Like, for example, the, U the radio is working on a Python script that I built and didn't have GPT do the entire thing. So I'm like, I can make projects work now properly. The question is, do I want to learn another script or do I want to make projects in another script or should I actually learn Python? <laughs> Because I still don't know dick about the programming language, other than a very basic understanding of how the structure works. I'm looking forward to holiday month. I'm looking forward to getting the, uh, the stream set up. I've got a few Christmas shirts already lined up. It's going to be killer. You're listening to Road Stream Radio. All the best for the most precious. Also, if all of these people were able to smear mud onto your roof to this level, maybe you're doing something wrong. I'm not here to victim blame, and I'm not here to judge my clients, but maybe 
if your roof is covered in grime that people have launched at your house, maybe you're the one doing something wrong. It's fungus. It's supposed to be, what is it exactly? It's supposedly moss. Okay, so this is just moss, Never mind. Still, point still stands. The fact that you have so much grit and grime all over your house that people have deposited there. At least this came from nature. This song is also from Super Mario RPG. It kind of has a uh, Kingdom Hearts Alice in Wonderland level vibe to it. I don't know what Hunter Lode is talking about, and honestly, I don't really care enough to read back in his conversation. This whole house is disgusting. This whole house is filthy. On the plus side, at least there doesn't seem to be a lot of little crap to take care of. It's like everything is like big sections. It's like a roof. Like a section of, you know, fence. It's not like slat one, slat two. Roof cap, roof cap, roof, 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 uh, mythic quest. Cool. I think we can get off the roof now. Shit. Right after we get that. I was thinking we might have to stop this one early, but the more we get along, we're already at 80%, so... I think we'll be able to finish this tonight. I like making progress on the main missions. We are making just this is one more uh, main mission that we can take care of. And I think that's wonderful because the further we get along, the better we will get to get to the ultra uh, power washer um, tool that, that is, is just amazingly awesome. Great planning, love. You are a flatterer. Did any, has anyone told you, Kitty, that you are a flatterer? I'm just out here, you know, trying to trying to power wash a living, and, and you're over here just sweet talking me as, as, as if I, I'm worthy of the attentions of such a lovely young lady. What is all this shit? What is this? Lichen? Dirt streaks? <laughs> Gross. I'm trying to think. I was about... Sorry, I had a moment of dead air there for a hot second. Um, I was trying to think, what is the next uh, DLC we should do? Um, I'm kind of thinking I want to do the Back to the Future DLC. The month of December, spoilers, is going to be a fairly power wash free month as far as I'm aware. Uh, so we will have a, a few weeks off from power washing just like we did during Spooky Month. You were swoon worthy? No, thanks, kitty. You are a charmer. You know what I missed that we haven't done in a while? We haven't done a, uh, a a Willow Roulette yet. Like played some just random retro games. One second. We haven't done that in quite a while. But that's something that it's like that needs to be just our random backup game. Like, if a game just straight up doesn't work and we have nothing to do, we can do, like, a, a Willow randomizer. Because that still works. I could push the button and it will play a random-ass uh, NES game right now. But I don't want to do that. I want to power wash. I want to finish up this uh, this job. We were hired to do a role. What I probably need to do is get out there on that side and wash the outside of this one. Oh, God. This whole side seems annoying more than anything. Like, the whole side of, of this side of the house 
Seems more irritating than disgusting. I'm gonna move you. Ladder. Thank you. Put the ladder there. Put you here. If I can. Put. There you go. It didn't want to let go of the step ladder. I'm trying to think of what the weakest track in Super Mario RPG was, and Monstro Town, which is playing right now, was not one of them. It's not like my favorite song, but there are some real stinkers on the Super Mario RPG soundtrack. Like Smithy's Factory, it's pretty bad. Uh, Star Hill is pretty bad. Yoshi's Island, pretty bad. Also, speaking of Yoshi's Island, have I ever actually played Yoshi's Island on stream? I have to have had, right? Yeah, I've I've definitely played Yoshi's Island. Although I haven't I don't think I've made Kitty watch it. I don't think I've made Kitty watch Yoshi's Island. Maybe I should put that on that old schedule. Um I'm starting to think about March, which Chances are, is going to be a month of Mario, because that's what March usually is. And I've got lots of games for Mario that I have not beaten yet, so that would be the time to do it. The question is, which games? Because last year I think we played... Uh, what did we play? We had Mario is Missing for the NES, I'm pretty sure. We could play Mario uh, Mario's Time Machine, like all the really terrible Mario games. Might just go download a guide. Not sure you've seen all of Yoshi's Island. Maybe that's what I'll put on this guide. That, that's like a two or three nights. Probably two. Maybe, yeah, I would say two. Maybe three. <laughs> Either way, that's a really fun one. It's got a great soundtrack. Hi, Mr. New Vegas. Nuclear Winter Wonderland. Look for it on Holotape. If you like news, you're gonna love our next segment. No suspects have been identified, but seniors are advised to be on the lookout for the so-called Pincher Killer. In other news, the Kings have been killed in a fight with NCR forces after weeks of mounting hostility. Witnesses report the King's last word was simply Got some songs coming up for you right now. At least one is probably about love. <laughs> and this is it. That actually tracks. That worked a lot better than I thought it would. <laughs> this song is about love. It's about love and Johnny. This song is from Chrono Trigger. It's a song about a robot. A robot that you race. He's a car. You race in a bike. That also looks suspiciously like a car. And it was probably bad translation. When Honestly, I was the kind of kid that when something had like a bad translation, I just sort of accepted that that's just what they wanted. I didn't really think about it. Like, if somebody said some dumb word like son of a submariner in Final Fantasy VI because Ted Woolsey, I just assumed that's kind of what they wanted in the original Japanese. I don't know if I'm off base to have been thinking. I was, I was off base, obviously. I don't know if it's abnormal that I was thinking that, but that's just how I felt. I possibly I keep looking around and I keep seeing filth everywhere it's like how could I possibly only have 10% left 
Johnny's like a powered trike and you're 100% on a motorcycle. Really? Do I have a... I don't think I have a channel of that. Chrono... Trigger Jet Bike. In what world is this a bike? That is a toboggan. That is a toboggan. That is a cyberpunk toboggan. Bike is a loose analog at best. That thing is a space toboggan, prove me wrong. Well, Johnny, I understand. Yeah, he's a trike. Which man, which actually kind of sounds like a slur. It's not, but it sounds the way it sounds like, oh, he's a trike. <laughs> you know, Johnny? Yeah. Boys were saying he's a he's a bit of a trike. Always out there racing. Hey, <laughs> what a trike. <laughs> it's actually starting to sound a little bad. <laughs> I just probably stopped saying it. It's a sci-fi motorcycle to the point where you're basically piloting a jet engine with a seat. Yeah, that's that's kind of the vibe I'm getting. I'm like, that's not, that's not a, that's not a bike. That's only... A motorcycle has to be on the ground, I would think. I don't know. It has to have contact with the ground of some sort. That is true. I I shouldn't make that segue. I was going to segue into something else. I'm just going to say I haven't listened to... Um, Actually, any audiobooks in a little while because I've been waiting for Christmas. Um, Christmas time, I'm going to listen to, you know, the normal Tim Curry Christmas Carol and stuff, but I don't want to start a new audiobook right before Christmas. Before the. The reason I was saying that is because it has something to do with other things that I really shouldn't correlate to slurs. Speaking of which, if you annoyed, do you remember the, uh, the guy who used to be, a, you know, around a billion years ago. Was his name Slur? I was trying to remember that the other day. What the hell was his name? And then I, I remember he, like, irritated me to the point where I eventually, I eventually banned him because of his opinions on 80s music. Uh, which was mostly just a boiling point because I didn't really like him very much. I'm just like, did I really hang out with a person named Slur? I feel like that should have been a red flag. I'm like, I feel... I feel like it is slur. Oh, it doesn't matter. Just curious. I just saw the name slur and I'm like, you know what? Did we have somebody in here with the name of that and why? Well, I guess we don't need more, so. I have a whole section to clean. I think this is where the remaining 10% is, is pretty much this whole section. 
We are better than that as a society. I mean, to be fair, in the interest of fairness, it wasn't like they were an actual slur. Their name was just slur. Ah, God, it was something like that. If it wasn't slur, it was like an S and four letters. I don't know. I could probably find it if I really cared, but I, I don't know if I care that much. I'm just, I was just curious. Because that's like, wow, that's a, it's not a great name. Not a great username from R00R, but I thought it was short for slurry, like a slushy. That's because you're an adorable and sweet person, Kitty. But I guess so was I, because uh, if, if the name was slurry, I never thought anything of it. Like how people do st weird Steam names. <sighs> yeah. There's a difference between having a dark and weird Steam name and having your main username be that. I, I, I don't know. It's hard to describe. Um, Chrono Trigger. Yeah, I'm like, I was having a hard time thinking of where this is from. Magishu, for example, is currently Winston Churchill's only fans. That's a little different than, you know, it's one thing to have a jokey uh, Steam name. It's another thing to have your actual base username. It would be like your base username being, I don't know, like homicide. It's not illegal. It's free country. Just kind of raise his eyebrows, you know? Or like your 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 name is like racially insensitive. What's Roar TV from? Uh, this is a um, Oblivion slash I'm assuming this is what you're talking about. This is a Oblivion slash Skyrim joke. More Skyrim. As for where it's from, I have no idea. Apple images, most likely. Or somebody posts it in Discord. The video, the video before it? Well, what was the video before it? Previous video was three ninety nine. Let's find out. This? I have no idea about this one either. I'm going to be real. About seventy five percent of the Roar TV channels. If the question is where is it from, the answer is probably going to be somebody posted it online, and I thought. That's funny. I could look at that for 90 seconds, and then I put it in my Discord, and then I put it into Roar TV. The other 25% I ripped from a YouTube video of some sort. This is Dave Thomas. Pretty soon, after Thanksgiving, to be specific, we're going to be switching over to the... Uh, Christmas channels, which I probably need to do a burst of Christmas channels, uh, like I did with the Halloween channels. You want Wendy's? Who doesn't? Wendy's is delicious. Just realized I drive past a Wendy's every day, and even though we're not really looking at going out to eat right now, I could try Wendy's breakfast at some point. I've heard mixed reviews. I gotta say, going and spending, what? how much do you think a two slices of bread, actually I'll make the devil do it. Let's, try, let's test its math. Where are you? There you are. New question. Let's say I eat a peanut butter sandwich with a glop of honey in the middle. 
Let's assume the bread cost three dollars. How much? How much could? I'll say four dollars for the loaf. And the peanut butter cost seven dollars a jar. I'm I'm going above what I think it actually is, which means it's probably too cheap. Um, and the honey was like five dollars for the whole jar. Make estimates. How much did my sandwich cost? All right, let's see how its math is. Let's break it down and estimate the cost of your sandwich based on the ingredients you've provided. One, bread. A loaf of bread costs $4. Typically, a loaf of bread has about 20 slices, so each slice costs $4.20s equals 20 s. Since you're using two slices for the sandwich, Is that that's a Harry Potter three. spell? Two, peanut butter. A jar of peanut butter costs seven dollars. A typical jar of peanut butter contains about twenty-eight ounces. A serving size is usually around two tablespoons or about one ounces. That means you can get about twenty-eight servings per jar. So each serving costs seven dollars. Twenty-eight equals twenty-five. You probably used about two tablespoons for the sandwich, so it's fifty for the peanut butter. Three, honey. A jar of honey costs five dollars. A typical jar contains about twelve ounces. Since a tablespoon of honey weighs about 0.75 ounces, you'd get about sixteen tablespoons of honey from a jar. So each tablespoon costs five for sixteen equals 0.31. If you added a, a glop of honey, let's estimate that as about two tablespoons, which would cost sixty cents. Hash total cost of your sandwich: bread, forty. Euro. Peanut butter, 50. Honey, total equal to 40 cents plus 50 plus plus 62, $1.52. This so is really good to listen to. your sandwich costs approximately one fifty-two. So my sandwich, assuming my bread cost 40 cents, and the peanut butter costs 50 cents, and the honey costs 62 cents, there's no way I put 62 cents worth of honey on my sandwich. That's not, that's, that can't be right. <laughs> There's no way I put 62 cents worth of honey onto my sandwich. I put on a good dollop of Daisy when it comes to honey. Five plus six plus five plus six plus five plus six plus five plus six. This is a good time to test this button. Does that work? It does. Cool. Five plus six plus five plus six. I was meaning to test if that actually worked. Anyways, let's assume that I somehow put 62 cents worth of honey onto my sandwich. It's still only allegedly a dollar 52 for my peanut butter and honey sandwich. A the sandwich, the, 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 what I was normally getting for lunch when I was going out to eat for lunch at its most expensive, God, how much was I paying? Like nine fifty. Nine fifty or something Prior like that. Prior to the invasion of Naboo, Jedi Master Qui-Gon Jinn and his Padawan, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Went to Kashyyyk to observe the Life Day celebrations there. No, sh no, At they the celebrations, did not. the Jedi met up the Wookiee Brennan, a friend of Jen's, and set out to help him find the missing Wookiee Balvis. However, before they could do so, the Jedi and the celebrants were attacked by Trandoshan hunters, who captured Jen and several Wookiees. Nevertheless, the Jedi Master freed himself and the Wookiees with Kenobis. Qui-Gon Qui Jinn did not celebrate Life Day. That's so stupid. That's so stupid. Uh, do I need to do a deep dive on, on, on Life Day? On non-Christmas special related Life Day? I already kind of am. I'm already doing the, um, that one comic. I'm going to be doing that again this year as well. The the one comic that goes over 
you know, Lumpy falling from the treetops and then having special Wookiee powers. That's not scheduled till like later in December, though. Also, these eaves are filthy. You're at 96%. This house is looking pretty good. When Wookiees were enslaved by the Galactic Empire, the holiday took on an even greater significance. Two, members of Box Triff's mob, such as the Thug Waldi, celebrated Life Day by exchanging gifts. Eight, after the Empire's fall, Life Day came to be a holiday celebrated by people across the galaxy. Eight, as historian Electrono wrote in the Traveler's Guide to Batu regarding Batu. A planet located at the edge of the Outer Rim territories, the world's residents celebrated the holiday with festive deck. With festive deck! Now that's a holiday I can get behind. Where's my... Oh my god, look at all this dirt! You, here. So much gross junk on the outside of the stairs that I've missed. Like everything's looking real good, Carl, except for just this little bit of junk that I missed out on. <laughs> this is about the part of the uh this is about the part of the map where I get real damn sick of it. Because this is the part of the map where you're spending your entire time going over the same crap you've gone over for four, you know, for two hours straight. It's like, you know what? I think I'm getting tired of seeing the old uh, tree forest, the treehouse map. Which, you know, happens with every map, to be fair. I need this stupid thing, don't I? That's just how these maps work. You get to this point and it's like, okay. Ding right. dong dickity doodle. I, th I think I'm, I think I'm good on the old treehouse map. But we're almost there. This song is also from Secret of Mana. Secret of Mana had a very, very good underrated soundtrack. It was nothing, you know, I'm not going to call the dogs home for it or anything, but it was worthwhile. I think it was, it ranked up there. I'd say top 15 soundtracks for the Super Nintendo. So good. Uh, this is all dirty. You go here. On the plus side, at least the handrail is one whole section, so if I find all the dirt over the full section, it counts. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. I love you. I love you. Now back, now to, our back to our show. I never saw Freakazoid. Which is where that's from, in case that wasn't an obvious segue. I remember... Segway, or uh, excuse me, I remember Freakazoid coming on and being like, oh, it's, it's Freakazoid. I think I would have liked it better if I was either a little older or a little younger. Not the age I was. That said, it had a bunch of good clips, so. You go here, right in the middle.
so close. We can go over here. What's still dirty? All of this? Yeah, okay. How about right here instead? Spending too much time with a fine tooth comb when there's a big wall of green grit right over here. It's like, you know, that's probably where I should start. I really don't want to spend like three hours looking for the rest of this crap, but I think we're really close. Only a few percent away. Only a few percent away. If I say it enough, it will be true. That is what all the guides said. Can I put you over here? Can we move you to the middle? I think the Chrono Trigger is actually giving us strength. Let's put you over here. And I can grab this pile of dirt. I'd like to at least get to 98%. Would be fantastic. So you found out why people celebrate Life Day on uh, July, or excuse me, November 17th. Is it marketing? That's when the special aired? <sighs> like, I knew it aired in November. I don't know if that really... I don't know if that really cuts it in terms of canon. If you're going to go out of your way to celebrate Life Day, the from the Star Wars Christmas special, it's a Christmas analog. I feel like it, by all conventions, should be considered a Christmas holiday. The special was released on November 17, 1978, exactly one week before Thanksgiving in the United States. 18. In the special, Han Solo and his Wookiee first made Chewbacca visit Kashyyyk so the latter can celebrate Life Day with his family. 17. The 2017 short story Wills, written by Tom Engelberger and released as part of the From a Certain Point of View anthology, contains a brief reference to the holiday special, with a character stating that they have some great ideas for an episode about it. Bunch of self-referential humor about the, uh, about the a thing that George Lucas hated so much. I bet you he wishes the internet was never made when it comes when it comes to that. We're at 98. On November 17, 2019, a fan organized Life Day celebration was held at Disneyland Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. 19. The Lego Star Wars Holiday Special a Lego film revolving around Life Day, was released on Disney Plus on 20, Life Day November 17, 2020. In the Lego Holiday Specials trailer, the Jedi Grand Master Yoda defines Life Day as a time of friendship and family, a time of joy. 16. I guess... I don't know. Just... What am I missing here? Or faces. I really don't want to pixel hunt for all of this crap for like the next 30 minutes. Who releases a Christmas special a week before Thanksgiving? They probably wanted. They were. They were probably like, you know what? Thanksgiving isn't earning us all that much money. Weirdly enough, like the entertainment business isn't making a lot of money during Thanksgiving week, so they needed to find something terrible to put in that would have the same lasting power as Christmas. Maybe there was too many execs that were like, look, you got to stop reminding people of Christmas, and they were like, but we got this cool Christmas special, and they like, just call it something else, and they're like, Life Day? It's like, fuck it, who cares, whatever. I don't know, I'm trying to think like a cocaine-obsessed uh, uh, executive from 1970. Grab all of this. 
Part of me wants to just say screw it and I'll do it off camera, but we're at 98%. We're at 98%. What a kick in the balls to not get to 100. called it a holiday special like hell it wasn't a Christmas special yeah it's I don't know I, I understand from a I don't know if it's a marketing thing or from an executive standpoint like it makes sense that the stupid thing came out in November it makes sense to celebrate it on November 17th but I don't know I feel like it sort of goes against the spirit of the holiday considering it was intended to be a Christmas, or at the very least, Christmas season special, but we all know it was Christmas. <laughs> nope. Here, I got you. Mark. I think it reads... Or I think it uh, says only contains, like, if you add extra, it doesn't matter. I think adding extra variables breaks that, but not hard enough that it's a big deal. You just get a black screen. Which is what you got right now, because that is a void right there. That is a void of a cat. He's a good void, though. He is a terrific kitty cat that's going to make everybody sad when he passes because cats do not live forever unfortunately we got to be prepared for that inevitability do I have anything else to clean upper deck rim joists well they should you are, you, you are correct I'm not in charge of that if I was in charge of that, I would ensure that cats live. I don't know if cats would want to live forever. I'm not going to lie. I, I don't think cats are the kind who would be like, I, I would. I hate the thought of, you know, seeing what's on the other side. Cats would totally be cool with, uh, with, with, with moving on, air quotes. Because they're like, there's a whole adventure out there. After not being alive anymore, I want to see what's over there. And it's like, oh, kitty cat, I don't, you're so brave. You're so brave, uh, <laughs> Quango, whatever the hell I named you. Uh, there's the button. Cats, I've, I've said it before, I'll say it again. I'm at 99%. There's no way I can stop right now. I've said it before, I'd say it again. Cats are horrible monsters that if they weren't adorable, um, we would... They would be absolute demons. They are absolute demons, but we wouldn't tolerate them if they were uglier than they are now, is I guess what I'm trying to say. There we go. We're getting close. What is door? Where, where's door at? Why not clean the door? Gordita. That's right. We did name it Gordita. It was Klungo, right? That was the original name. I forgot that we named it Gordita. Hey, you said name him a food, from what I recall. And I and I, from last I checked, Gordita was a food. Chandlo. Sorry, it's been a long time. We've been doing a lot of uh, been doing a lot of power washing since then. Let's get all the lanterns. Am I missing any lanterns? Also, I'm gonna turn on the auto dirter. Boop. There we go. Now it should automatically show us dirt as we pass. Like all this dirt out here, for example. Of 
Gordita's a good name for a cat. Hey, Jim. Add some steak chalupas. You want one? Jim! Cats pulling off being fat pretty well. Cats pull off, not pulling. I don't know if I want to do the rest of these. We're already, oh God, what time is it? It's already 10.15, I'm, I'll just do the rest of these off. Normally I wouldn't quit this close to the end, but who cares? <laughs> We've seen the we've seen the ending screen before. You know what? Next time we're gonna hit this right away, and then we're gonna see an ending screen. Bam! Right immediately. Google Translate confirms translating it as chubby. Gordita or Chalupa? Fair enough. Alright, I'm going to bed. Have a fantastic evening. I will see you later on uh Thursday. We'll be the next stream. Bye! Please take young children by the hand and look down.